welcome to your daily dose of inspirational and life-changing Bible studies designed to equip you to conquer your world. We encourage you to share this devotion with your family and friends, even start a watch party. We know that you will be blessed and edified. Today's daily devotion starts now. All right, so this morning we're going to go from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to go from the book of Hebrews chapter 11, and um, we're going to go with the first, the first three verses, the first three verses. All right, Hebrews chapter 11. Good morning to all of you. All right, so it says, Now faith is the substance of things to hope for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the wills were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. I'm going to read that again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the wills were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now, I want to show you a, a little relationship in the Bible um, that we see constantly and it's a very powerful combination if you understand how to use it, right? Very powerful combination if you know how to use it. Now, when we are saved, when we are saved, um, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ died and he rose again, then you can be saved. So salvation begins with a belief in the heart expressed with the words of your mouth. A belief in the heart confessed with the mouth. That's how salvation begins. Now, I want you to know that that is a hint. How great of a salvation that we have that begins with the simple belief in a heart and a confession with the mouth. Watch this. Later on, we see in Scripture that the Bible is instructing us that if we believe the things that we pray for when we ask God, we can say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and it shall be done. So we don't just begin our salvation with a belief in the heart and a confession of the mouth. This is how the just lives. The just lives by faith. And that faith is something that lives or dwells in your heart and it is confessed with your mouth. This is a very powerful principle. But I have seen in life where people may get it a little bit confused and I want to make sure that we bring clarity. Here's what David said in Psalm 19, verse number 14. Psalm 19, verse number 14. Here's it. Let the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Do you see the pattern again? Now watch this. I have seen where people say the right things, but in their heart, something is wrong. Watch this. I want to show you. There's only one way this thing can work. If you are playing, you are saying the right things to the Lord. You're saying the right things around your cluster members. You're saying the right things among um, uh, people when you are public with your Christianity. You're saying the right things in choir practice. You're saying the right things when you are meeting with the rest of the ushers. You're saying Psalm 19, eh? right? You're saying the rest of things when you are around the rest of believers. But in your heart, the meditation of your heart, you, you might be saying one thing with your mouth, but in your heart, something else is there. It don't work. You can't just play, you are making a confession but opposite to your confession, there's another belief in your heart. Do you know there are people who can tell you nice things, but in their heart, they despise you? The book of Proverbs says, be careful when you sit with a ruler. Be careful when you sit with a ruler. They will tell you eat and drink, but in their heart, they are grudging that you're eating their food. He said, you will bring this thing up and vomit it. So do not be a man given to your hunger, or given to your appetites. So there are people who will tell you with their mouth one thing, but in their heart, they don't like you, you know. In their heart, they despise you. You cannot please God by, by, by trying to appease him with words. He said, some of you, you worship me with your lips. But your heart, you cannot give God lip service. God is not a God. God is not a God who can be mocked. Christianity is not lip service. As a matter of fact, even if you cannot speak, you could still please God in your heart. If there's not one more word that can be uttered out of your mouth, you can still please God by having a pure heart. A clean heart. May the Lord help us all. May the Lord show us mercy. So, that's one combination. Now, the another combination is when people believe in their heart, but their mouth saying something else. You cannot say you believe in God with your heart, but you speak a certain way. Your mouth must align with the word of God. You see, it says the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. It's not just saying God knows my heart. Eh? God knows my heart. People will say that when they make mistakes. God knows my heart. God knows my heart. Well, you need to tell your mouth that as well. You cannot say God knows your heart. Your heart, you say, is right with God. But your mouth, the Bible says the mouth of the righteous brings healing, you know. But when the mouth of the wicked is like a sword, a cutlass, it only bring in damage. You cannot just tell me your heart is with God. And when you speak, you just cutting everything down in front of you. Because if God is in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth should speak. Whatever is abundant in your heart, that is what comes out, you know. Nobody curses by mistake. A curse is never a mistake. Some of you vexed with me this morning. 
Pastor Luke, no, I make a little mistake every now and then. No, it's not a mistake. It's just that you may not have wanted us to hear, but it is telling you of things in your heart. Your mouth needs to be saved too. Somebody shout amen. Say, Luke, this Monday morning you're bringing this type of word? I ain't able with you this morning, huh? I logging off right now. Your mouth needs to be Christian too. The Bible says that the, that, that the Lord wakes you up in the morning to give you what? A word in season for him who is weary. When you're a believer, you have to have a word in your mouth. For people who are weary, your mouth must not make people weary. You have to have a word in season for those who are weary so that you will lift them up, encourage them, empower them, give them life. You come around a Christian and their mouth only put in you in fear. Their mouth put in you in anger. Their mouth put in you in gossip. Then I, I, I don't know about that type of Christianity. You have to have discipline. The tongue, it cannot be tamed. It is hard, but he that control what he says is likened unto a man of perfect character. You have to work on your mouth on what you say. But to work on the mouth is to work on the heart. Start here. First. I'm going to show you something. Eh? This is powerful because I'm coming back here to the book, book of Hebrews 11 about faith. So there is a powerful combination when your heart and mouth aligns. You will, if you catch this, if you catch this, you will see how many powerful things. I'll put up a testimony and I will show you a young lady who had five children. She traveled all her life, never had a car. Traveling with five children everywhere they have to go. They have to get a taxi, five of them, and with all the restrictions, they can't go, everybody can't go anywhere. She sent me a testimony. The Lord blessed her with a brand new car. It's a message that I preached. Write it down. Confess it. She went and bought an air freshener for the car long before she had the car. She put it on her desk. Put a sign in front of you. See it. Thank God in advance for it. Today now she has a brand new car for her and her children. If you catch this, it will be powerful. If you learn how to work your heart and mouth. Your salvation started with it. Your faith continues with it. You must learn how to work a belief in a heart and a confession in the mouth. It is a, I don't want to say it's a secret, but it is a hidden truth in plain sight. How to use a belief in the heart and a confession of the mouth. Now watch this. I'm going back to Hebrews chapter 11. Are you with me this morning? Listen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. So I want you to know if the elders obtain a good testimony by faith and you want to obtain a good report or good testimony, you too should live by faith. Amen. If it's good for the elders, it's good for you. If the elders re receive a good report by faith, you, you want to receive a good report by faith. Now watch this. This is powerful. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Y'all ready for this this morning? Watch this. Your world is framed by the word. Come on, somebody. You're all supposed to be getting excited this morning. Watch this. Watch this. By faith, we understand that the worlds, W-O-R-L-D-S, were framed, shaped, by the word of God. Your word is framed by your word. Watch this. 
God's word in your mouth will frame your world. Some of you didn't get it. Let me say it again. God's word in your mouth will frame your world. This is how God framed this world we are living in. He did it with his word. You can take God's word, put it in your mouth. Listen, what did he tell Jeremiah? I will put my words in your... Come on, somebody. You all miss a good time to shout. If we were in church, you should be standing right now on your feet, hollering, amen. Jeremiah, I will put my words... Come on, tag somebody in the chat right now and say, God has put my word, his word in my mouth. His word in my mouth. God puts his word in my mouth. Come on, somebody. You missed a good time this morning on a Monday. I'm giving you something that will impact your life forever. God said, I'm putting my word in your mouth. Why? It's the same word that he framed the world. He puts the word in your mouth. You can frame your own world with God's words in your mouth. How many of you know the word has power? So the world you experience is being framed by the words you are using. Now watch this. The mistake we make is that we make conditions create our words. Instead of letting our words create conditions. We let the conditions create our words versus letting our words create the condition. You say, well, Luke, I'm living in this world. I can't avoid the conditions. Hold on, hold on. Disciples are in the boat with Jesus. Jesus is asleep. The storms, the wind, the waves. The disciples run into Jesus. Carest thou not that we perish? Another version says, you don't care that we're going to drown? If that was in Trinidad, you don't care we're going on drunk? D-R-U-N-G. So the conditions created what? The words of the disciples. It was full with fear. It was full with worry. It was full with concern. Their words are full with fear. Their words are full with worry. Their words are full with concern. You don't care that we're going to drown? The conditions created their words. Now remember this. God's word in your mouth can frame your world. Listen to Jesus. Peace be still. And what happened? The winds obeyed him. The disciple says, wow, who is this guy that even the winds are listening to him? Now watch this. Jesus' words created the conditions. But the conditions created the disciples' words. Some of you missed it. Uh, let, let me say it again. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Uh, put, put, a, put a one in the chat if you want me to say it again. I might just have to repeat this for you this morning. Put a one in the chat if you want me to repeat this. When the storms came, the disciples took the conditions of the storms and it produced their words. But when Jesus saw the storm, he let his words produce conditions. Stop paying attention to the conditions of the world. You have the power this morning to frame your world with the words that God has put in your mouth. Tell the storm, peace be still. Stop letting the storm produce worry and concern and doubt about the faithfulness of God. God is not about to be unfaithful in a time of crisis. He is the same yesterday. 
He's the same today and he'll be the same forever. My God is unchanging and his word will not fail. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will continue to stand. I'm trying to give you a principle here this morning. I'm trying to make you to understand one thing. You can frame your world. You get up in the morning. I thank the Lord that my house is free of all disease. Frame your world. I thank the Lord this morning that my children are protected. It's a belief in my heart. And it's a confession with my mouth. And my world begins to take orders from me. Come on, somebody. It says, who is this man that even the winds obey him? So, so you don't believe that you have the authority that even the winds will obey you. Why? Because you're using your own opinions in your mouth. No, 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 no. He said, Jeremiah, I put my words in your mouth. You have power when you use his word in your mouth. But watch this. It must be a belief that is a meditation of the heart. You see, watch this. Even the devil knew his words. How many of you know the devil, when he tempted Jesus, knew the word of God? So you can't be a devil repeating the scriptures. Come on. Don't get offended. Don't jump off. I'm, I'm, I, stick with me this morning. Even devils know scriptures. Come on. But, but it must be a belief in the heart. It must be a belief in the heart. Before it's a confession of the mouth, it must first be a belief in the heart. Get the word in your heart. That's how I know you are saved. Get the word in your heart. That's how I know you are surrendered. Get the word in your heart. He'll send his word to heal my disease. The greatest of all sickness in this world is sin. Some of you are worried about the, the, the COVID-19, but you're not, you're, not, you're not as worried about sin. Some of us need to be more concerned about, about the deadly power of sin. For the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Why aren't we as worried about sin that has taken millions to an eternity without God? But we are worried about hundreds of thousands. Let me tell you something. A day is coming where if you don't have the vaccine of the power of God, meaning that you are protected by the blood of the Lamb, the blood that has never lost its power, that can forgive you of every sin. That's what we need to be more concerned about, whether you're vaccinated or not. I want you to know this, that it is the blood that will cover you at the end of the day. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but they that trust in the name of the Lord, they that trust in the power of the Almighty God, they are the ones who can be confident in the middle of battle. Do not be confident in your horses and chariots. Neither do not be foolish and not practice wisdom. But at the end of the day, if you are a believer, your life is in the hand of the Lord. When I see the blood, I will pass over thee. When I see the blood, I will pass over thee. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you all this. You don't have to follow my example, but I'm just telling you this. I pay more attention to this than to any other type of documentation. You see, when, when I fill my mind with this, it changes my world. I, I, I spent, look, at least two hours a day studying the word of God. I need to, I need, I, I, I have to put in at least, you, you gotta, when you put in time, you put in the word of God, it changes the way you think. It changes the way you process, the way you analyze, the way you walk, the way you speak. It, it, it tenderizes your spirit. It puts you in a sense of peace. I, I don't pay I don't pay a lot of attention to, 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 to the wisdom of man. Lest I put my trust in the wisdom of man. I, I don't want to lean on rely on that. I want to rely on the power of God. I just have two more minutes. Watch this. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Watch this. So the things which are seen 
were not made of things which are visible. This is the power you have today. The thing that you will see in your life is created from something you do not see in your life right now. I, I, I miss, I, 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 I lost some of you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I lost some of you. This comb is seen right now. But before this comb was created, it was created by something not seen. Somebody had a thought. It's not seen. It's in my mind. It's not physical. It's not tangible. It's intangible. Somebody had a thought. And when they had the thought of what they wanted to create, they put into action based on the thought or the idea. And then this was created. So that which is seen was created by something that was not visible. I lost some of you. I, lo <laughs> I lost some of you right now. So watch this. Everything you want to see in your life is created from something that is not seen. I lost some of you. I I I'm, I'm running out of time. There are things in your life right now that some of you don't want to see anymore. Can I alert you? Some of the things in your life that you don't want to see anymore is being created by something you don't see right now. And watch this. A lot of times, people's heart are meditating on things they are not aware of. Anytime something is manifesting in your life that you want to get rid of, Check the meditation of your heart. Here's why. The words, all your words aren't audible. There's some other words that you confess, but nobody else hears them. Let me, let me, let me, let me explain this to you. The woman with the issue of blood. She said to who? I just heard you at home. You said herself. She said to who? Herself. Some of your inner conversations is creating some of the things in your life that you don't want to see. A father came to Jesus. He says, my son, he has these epileptic and thing. He throws himself in the fire. Father said, how, how, Jesus said, how long has this been going on since he was a child? He says, um, if you are able to heal him. Jesus says, if you are putting a condition around my power. It's not a question if. He says, all things are possible if you believe. The if is about your belief. The if is not about my power. The if is around your belief. Then the father says, I believe. But help thou my on belief. He is saying he believes, but he's also confessing there's also unbelief. So some of you, on the surface, you're saying it because you know it is expected of you to see the right things. But somewhere down in your heart, you might be housing unbelief and your inner conversations is, I don't really believe this thing can happen, but I can't say that because everybody expect me to be positive and believing. So out of my mouth, I will say something. But deep down in my heart, I have doubts about this. Those are the things that are manifesting in your life. Because anything that is visible is being created by something that is not visible. This is how faith works. It is, it is the unseen will creating the seen will. So which one is more powerful? The unseen will. Because everything in the seen will is rooted to something in the unseen will. So that is why you have to ask the Lord, search me and see. 
search me and see. Because sometimes you don't know, you know, right in your own heart. Things like unforgiveness and a lot of things, is it, it finds root in our heart. While men slept, the enemy sows seeds. Things in your heart and you're pondering. Your inner conversations. Lord, help us. May the Lord help us. Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness and your mercies. I thank you for the power that you have given us. Just like you told Jeremiah, I'll put my words in your mouth. And by your word was the world frame. May we not let the conditions create our words, but may our words create the conditions. When we say peace be still, may the storms and the seas and the wind obey us. Your, you have given us that authority this morning and we want to walk in it. I pray that those words will abide in our hearts. Like you said in John 15, so that our mouth aligns with the belief and the meditation of the word in our heart and may it be acceptable in our sight. Father, if there be anything in us, wicked ways, anything in us, unforgiveness, anything in us, those inner conversations, that are not in line with your truth. Help us, Father. Show us mercy this morning. For we are weak, but then we are strong because your strength is made perfect in our weakness. May the words of our mouth, meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and my redeemer. Amen. God bless you. May you have a great day. Start of a week, remember, go shape and frame your world by God's word in your mouth. God bless you. Bye-bye, everybody. You took the form of